Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Mike Anderson. Continuing our annual fishing reports, my first guest this week is Dave Frieda. Dave, you manage Lake Sakakawea. Lake Sakakawea walleye fishing has been incredible these last couple years. Let's talk about the size structure and the abundance of walleye in Lake Sakakawea. Like you mentioned, it's been several years we've been riding a high, and it seems like a broken record, but again, last summer we had another phenomenal year of fishing. Um, our walleye abundance the last three years has never been higher since Lake Sakakawea was formed. Um, you know, in our 60 years of collecting data, we've never had more walleyes. We also, aside from having a lot of walleyes, uh, we have a good size structure. We have a distribution from small fish to a good abundance of larger fish too. So it's a nice, it's a high population, but it's also well balanced. Okay, so no need for any restrictions on any of these fish? No, not right now. I mean, we've never had better conditions. Um, you know, we, we do hear that, you know, concern over harvesting too many big fish sometimes and, and things like that. And, you know, we looked at that last summer with the creel survey we had. <clears throat> we had very high usage and catch last summer. Um, you know, like a one over 20 inch limit, if there would have been one in effect on Skakawea, um, our clerks measured just under 10,000 walleyes last year and 17% uh, of those were over 20 inches out of the total harvest where 70% of the harvest was 15 to 20 inch fish. If you would uh, theoretically put on a, a one over 20 inch minimum, it would have reduced the harvest by about <clears throat> 3%, just under 3% last summer under the current conditions, and that's with a good abundance of large fish out there. So anglers really aren't targeting those in a bigger proportion than what they are out there. In fact, the, the proportion of fish harvested over 20 inches is, by anglers is actually smaller than what's out there. So, and our total mortality that we monitor every year is low on Sakakawea. Okay, how is reproduction on the Big Lake here? It's been very good since about 2011. Uh, starting in 11, we've had pretty consistent good year classes. Aside from 2012 was about the only poor year class we've had since then. So that's what's playing into this increasing abundance and a good size structure because you know we're eight years into this of good consistent recruitment. So. Okay. And we stock walleyes in Lake Sakakawea too. We do. Uh, stocking is a tool and at the right times we stock when conditions are warranted. Um, the abundance that has increased has been due to both aggressive stocking when we got the forage and water back and good natural reproduction. We've seen good reproduction in the central portions of the reservoir the last, the last several years. It's been real good. Um, Stocking is particularly important in the lower end of the reservoir where we don't see natural reproduction, so. Okay, how, speaking of forage, how is the forage and the smelt population in Lake Skakawea? It remains good. We're, we're still riding high, high abundance of all forage, essentially. So the fish are, and obviously the anglers are seeing that the fish are in good condition, so. Dave, one question you guys get a lot during these last couple of years is, boy, all these people are catching all these fish. Is that hurting the population in the lake? Like I alluded to earlier, you know, we, we monitor the population and the abundance has stayed high the last few years, even with, even with the high exploitation, at least perceived high exploitation that people have out there. Um, last summer, again, our, our adult fish population survey concluded at the end of July when the vast majority of our harvest is over with by then on Sakakawea. Most of it occurs in June and in the first part of July. Um, we still had very high abundance out there. And again, that's due to consistent recruitment, fish coming into the system and fish going out. Um, we did, anglers last year caught just about a million, just a little over a million walleyes in Sakakawea is what our creel survey estimated. And they harvested about 600,000 of those. Okay, one thing we should talk about too is barotrauma. Um, exactly. Last year, especially late in the year, those walleyes are moving, what, 30 feet and lower. Yeah. What's that do for some of the fish that are brought up? Well, Skakawea is one of the, one of the primary places where it becomes an issue that late summer and then the, in, the, in the fall too, our fish tend to go really deep on Skakawea, especially in the middle, the lower portions. And, uh, you know, there's, 
there's been a renewed in maybe not a renewed but more people targeting those deep fish their the techniques have developed their deep jigging lead core things like that that they're able to successfully target those fish and obviously if you're fishing those extreme depths 30 foot plus and and down you should plan on keeping what you're catching because even if those fish some of them obviously come up in tough conditions you can see the the obvious physical signs that they've got stress some of them that look good they still have internal injuries they can and they may swim away but they're they're delayed mortality associated with that okay so, so if you plan on fishing in deep water in late summer keep your catch. exactly okay let's move on to your northern pike populations in lake sakakawea uh, our pike population remains good it's been trending down overall abundance uh, we peaked in about 2010 we had the highest abundance again similar to walleye but we had the highest abundance ever of pike and part of that was we had a the strongest year class we've ever measured in Skakawea was produced in 2009 after the water came back from the drought so we had a huge year class there's been some year classes added since then but in general our our abundance is trending down because those fish are aging um, size structure is there's definitely a lot of good quality pike uh, there's definitely a good abundance of 20 pound plus fish out there still a good trophy fishery and the numbers aren't as high as they were but okay uh, a lot of anglers target salmon in late july and august how are the salmon doing in lake skakawea we had a phenomenal spawning run last year the the salmon fishing itself in the summer was <clears throat> so so i guess it wasn't lights out but it seemed to be the fish were there as they proved again in the spawning run we had a very strong run we collected very high number of eggs more than we needed we filled up the hatchery took care of some other states needs um, things were good that way it does seem like especially when we have these high water years and a lot of smelt stay up reservoir the bite happens later and later you know it's it's late august the fish don't seem to be pushing down close to the dam where most of the fishing is as early that there really isn't the need they have cold water wherever so the fish seem to be showing up later okay how many salmon are we stocking this this year uh there'll be 400 and some thousand four to five hundred thousand and that's a normal stocking that's a full stocking yeah we're producing what the hatchery can produce the limitations any other fish species in lake skakawea mm. that we should talk about um smallmouth bass they're largely overlooked but there's a good population and and obviously some big trophy fish out there there are very few people target them but um that's another opportunity out there and uh, channel catfish again they're vastly underutilized <clears throat> especially in the upper portions of the reservoir very high abundance um, you know, there's just a lot of overlooked opportunity there okay um how are water levels going to be this summer dave water levels again are going to be <clears throat> pretty high it looks like um, you know we're at first part of april and we gained six feet of water in eight day period which is atypical for this early in the year in late march we're we're already fairly high um, mountain snowpack hasn't started to come yet so we're gonna have we're definitely gonna have good water levels hopefully not as high as last year you also oversee the tail race right below the dam here how are things looking in that portion of the river um they've been pretty good all fall and winter on and off uh, just recently it's got tougher as releases are real low um, it's been pretty good walleye fishing though and you know obviously there's always a chance especially in the fall through winter there's some very large fish occasionally turn up and then there's a variety of there's always a trout and salmon and one thing that we've seen a resurgence of in the last couple of years is is the burbot ever really come back we've seen a real resurgence in burbot and historically there was a good burbot fishery down there and then it really lagged for 10 years or so up until you know probably the last three or four our burbot have really come back so there's a good fishery going on for those this winter too any unique projects or anything going on this spring somewhere in lake sakakawea um, we're going to continue a pike tagging project that we started two years ago uh, targeting just trophy size pike we arbitrarily set 40 inches so we're tagging pike that are 40 inches and above to look at exploitation because we've had some concerns among people that 
the perception that there's too many big pike being harvested. So we're looking at that. Um, to date, we've tagged about 140 in two years, and right now our exploitation by anglers is around 8%. It's pretty low on those big fish now. Um, You're also tagging walleye this Yeah, we're starting a, another walleye tagging study too on Sakakawea. That'll start this year and go for three or four years. Uh, again, we got a high population of walleyes with a good size structure. This will also help us get at is there a need for additional regulations? That's another tool to monitor it so we can we can look at the exploitation of different size structure fish, the large fish, the smaller fish, and, and that. So a lot of yeah. good information, Dave. Thank yeah. you. Joining me now is Northeast Fisheries District Supervisor Randy Hilter. Randy, you have a lot of fish species in your district. I want to talk about each uh, species one at a time. Let's start with walleyes. Yeah, we've got several very good walleye lakes up there. Uh, lake Coal is a, has lots of nice fish. There's also Herdsfield Tuffy, which good numbers of walleye. And uh, Goose Lake's doing real well right now. Okay, how about Northern Pike? Well, just about all our lakes and reservoirs have Northern Pike up there, so there's lots of opportunities. But some that come to mind would be like Carpenter Lake, Gravel Lake, uh, Sibley Lake is a good one. So yeah, there's plenty of opportunities for pike yet. Randy, let's move into your panfish lakes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Redwood Lake's uh, good for bluegill, as is uh, Lake Upsilon has a nice bluegill. Hami Dam has a good perch population, as well as uh, some black crappie. With all the snow on the ground, how are your water levels in most of your lakes? Well, they're, they're currently down from the last two seasons of being relatively dry, but it looks like they're going to get some extra water this spring. Okay, you guys just finished your dissolved oxygen testing here a month ago. What, what are you finding? Well, we're finding it, it's worse than average in terms of uh, dissolved oxygen levels and probable winter kills. Uh, we're currently at maybe about 15 lakes and reservoirs that are looking likely for some form of winter kill. Any of the more popular lakes that people would be interested in knowing about? Well, Harvey Dam is one that, uh, it, it does winter kill periodically, but that looks very low, as does Matichek Dam. Uh, other than that, there are a lot of the more marginal lower water lakes that uh, are going to suffer winter kill. Any projects you have going on this spring, summer, Randy? Well, with the winter kill that's occurring, we're going to be busy this spring uh, relocating adult perch and to restock some of those winter kill lakes, for sure. Okay, so basically you go into a lake and... Yeah, we'll net out small adults in lakes that have too many and we'll transport those to these lakes that have winter killed. A lot of good information, Randy. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Switching gears to the northwest part of the state, Aaron Slominski joins me. He's the fishery biologist that oversees the northwest part of the state and paddlefish. Aaron, uh, let's talk about your fish species first. Let's focus on walleyes first. How are the walleye populations in the northwest? Yeah, one of our better walleye lakes uh, is Blacktail Dam. There's a pretty good strong walleye population in Blacktail Dam the last couple of years and some, some nice fish too, some 20 to 25 inch fish. Uh, that's probably one of our better ones. Um, McGregor Dam, we'll go in this a little later, but uh, it was pretty good walleye lake. It appears it might winter kill this year, so I've heard a couple of reports of anglers seeing some, some dead fish on the bottom with uh, underwater cameras this year, so yeah, it'll uh, probably start from scratch, restock the lake, and uh, the walleye pop population's going to have to rebuild in that lake. But Okay, let's move on to your northern pike populations, Aaron. One of the good pike fisheries actually right in the town of Wilston recently has been the Little Muddy River. In some of the years when we get uh, decent runoff coming down the Little Muddy River, the pike population or pike fishing can be pretty good. Okay, uh, panfish. Uh, yeah, two of our better uh, panfish lakes the last couple of years have been Northgate Dam for bluegills. Bluegills are getting real nice sized, and Trenton Lake for crappies. Uh, Trenton's been a pretty good crappie producer for several years now. Some nice fish too. Let's talk trout. Yeah, we got several lakes we uh, stock with trout every year. Um, some of the community fisheries. Uh, Spring Lake Park, right in Williston, uh, Wofford City Pond, Stanley Pond, um, Coteray Dam, McGregor Dam gets stocked with trout every year. And uh, we kind of encourage anglers to get after these trout right away. Uh, sometimes when the water starts to warm up as the summer progresses, they, uh, they'll either die off or quit biting. So encourage anglers to get after them pretty early after we stock them. Okay, how about bass? We got a couple of good bass lakes. Uh, Coteray Dam is probably one of our better bass lakes. It's got some real nice largemouth bass. Okay, a project that you guys did in 2017, Aaron, is eradicated Kettle Lake. 
How is that lake coming along? Yeah, Kettle Lake uh, had a couple illegal introductions of, of fish. Uh, it was kind of managed as a, a trout lake, and it was a pretty good trout lake. You'd see some carryover trout that would grow, uh, you know, be a couple pounds, and it over winter and over summer trout. Um, so it was uh, full of stunted perch, so we figured it was a good time to eradicate the lake. Um, and it's kind of got to start from scratch. Um, we get stocked with trout annually every year. We, uh, we put some adult bluegills in there. They successfully reproduced. Um, and we threw some largemouth bass in there also. Some bass and bluegills kind of go hand in hand sometimes. And the largemouth bass can kind of keep the bluegill populations in check. So be a good up and comer lake in the future here, hopefully. Okay, uh, let's move in uh, to your dissolved oxygen testing, Aaron. You guys just finished. You talked a little bit about winter kill. What'd you find? Yeah, several lakes uh, had pretty low dissolved oxygen levels. Um, Cottonwood Lake was one of them. Uh, it's a pretty good pike fishery. Pike can be a pretty hardy game fish species. Um, they're typically one of the last game fish to winter kill, but we'll see uh, if that one will make it or not. Um, McGregor Dam also had some pretty low oxygen levels. Uh, and we did see, I heard reports from some anglers who saw some dead fish on their underwater cameras. Um, Leland and Sather Dam down in McKinsey County also had really low oxygen levels this winter and they're, they're pretty good bass bluegill lakes down there. Um, Short Creek Dam and Tioga Dam. So um, some of these lakes, uh, some winter kills aren't complete always. I mean there's always some fish that survive and sometimes but some of them are total winter kills but we'll, we'll follow up with some netting hopefully once the ice goes out. Aaron you also have the luxury of overseeing the paddlefish season and the paddlefish population up in the northwest. How are populations looking? Yeah, well, right now we're uh, kind of thriving off of a banner 1995 year class. Um, fish uh, that have been in the fishery for, you know, made a bulk of the harvest for quite a few years now. But what we're seeing, particularly in Montana, up at the uh, in intake fishery up in up the Yellowstone of Montana, is they're starting to see uh, this 2011 year class of males starting to show up in pretty good numbers. Um, some of the younger fish definitely make it through North Dakota before our season opens. Um, and uh, we'll expect to see good numbers of this 2011 year class males here in a couple of years in the North Dakota snag fishery. So it's kind of a, a good sign of things for the future. Okay, any changes to this year's season? Nope, changes uh, that we had last year shortened the season from a, a third of a month of May to a 21 day season, I should say. Uh, and we shortened the hours. Um, it's a 7 a.m. to 7 p.m daily snagging hours um, and things will remain the same this year. Uh, last year was a, a fairly slow season. We had lots of runoff, particularly down the Milk River that dumps into the Missouri River. That Milk River drainage saw some record snowfall. So it was high water and snagging was pretty tough uh, last year. But you know, we'll see a little bit of runoff this year, but probably not like the levels last year. Okay, season runs May 1st to? To May 21st. Or until uh, we reach a thousand fish harvest cap and then we we will give a 24-hour notice of in-season closure and then four additional snag and release days are following an in-season closure if it happens to we reach a thousand fish. A lot of good information, Aaron. Thank you. Thank you. Anglers are reminded they need a new fishing license starting April 1st. Licenses can be purchased by going to the North Dakota Game and Fish Department's website at gf.nd.gov or by calling 800-406-6409 are going to more than 140 vendor locations throughout the state. New this year, hunters and anglers will be given the opportunity to register as an organ, eye, and tissue donor. By clicking the link after purchasing a license, users will be directed to the North Dakota Department of Transportation Donor Registry. For more information regarding donor registry, visit DOT's website shown on the screen or contact LifeSource directly at 888-5-DONATE. For Aaron Slominski, Dave Frieda, Randy Hiltner, and the rest of the staff here at the Game of Fish Department. Thanks for joining us for this week's Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.